Let me start recording. Welcome everybody to our Monday's uh, mentorship Zoom call. I love doing this every Monday. I actually look forward to every Monday getting together with you guys and chatting about things that will improve our lives. And if we put into practice what we're learning on Mondays during the week, then life should start getting better. <laughs> Just little nuggets here and there that improve our lives. And um, I have to tell you, my homeschool journey has been a really bumpy one. I share some of my story with you guys this past two weeks. It took me three years to actually finally realize that I could do it better. You know, I was just banging my head against the wall all the time, just being busy and trying to keep my kids busy and trying to check off the list, you know, um, check off things from the list and uh, of, the, of my list, but there's a better way to do things. There is a, a better, we can always improve. We can always learn. We don't have to stay the same way where we are. We can move forward. So here at They Call Me Blast and in the homeschool sisterhood, we always, we always remind each other that we need to be making progress. Every little progress is still progress, right? It doesn't have to be something huge, but little by little, we make progress. Um, there is a saying in Italian <laughs> that goes, piano, piano, se va lontano. Little by little, you go far, okay? And, and that's how it is. It's little things that we tweak and we change and we improve and we, you know, just uh, start trying out that makes things different and make things better so you don't have to stay where you are you can make some progress you can make some changes and it doesn't have to be huge changes to make a difference it could be little things that will make a big difference right um i've been talking a lot about my diet because <laughs> i've been trying to lose weight but hey cutting one thing out of my diet can make a huge difference in my progress, right? As I walk towards the goal, which is to lose 50 pounds. You guys, it's a huge goal. Oh my gosh, it's huge, huge, huge. So, um, but again, I keep, I keep the list of the short goals, the short-term girl goals. Hey Dawn, hi Betty. So, so instead of, you know, thinking about the 50 pounds that I need to lose, I think about losing the next five pounds. That, does that make sense? So if I think about I'm going to lose 50 pounds, I'm overwhelmed. And I'm going to start doubting myself that I ever going to get this done, right? So instead, I think about, okay, my goal right now, it's five more pounds that I need to lose. And it's the same way with homeschooling. If I think about I need to graduate three kids from high school, I'm going to be like, what? That is a lot. How am I going to get, you know? get all the stuff done and I still have so many years ahead of me but what do I focus on I focus on the goals that I have for this year in our homeschool instead and we talked about that last week we talked about goals last year how to set clear goals not just for our homeschool but for our lives in general I mean you have to set if you want to make any kind of progress you need to set some kind of goals it's either your goal to uh, be self-sustainable to uh, grow your food to anything like if you work uh from home or if you have a job or whatever if you work in sales like i do like a lot of my income depends on selling my courses or you know selling my programs then i need to have some goals to look forward to that actually motivate me to get things done and to share more about what i do so goals are very important and i hope that some of the things that we're going to talk about today are going to become goals in your life that will help you to make progress, to keep moving forward. My One of my business mentor, he always says to us, oh my gosh, I, sometimes I can hear that in my sleep. He says, you don't need to get it right, you just need to get it going. So don't think that it needs to be perfect, you just need to get started, right? I am not good in a lot of things that I do, but that doesn't keep me from doing. And we need to keep that in mind because for a long time, my perfectionism 
held me back. For the longest time, trying to do everything perfectly kept me from doing things. So we need to keep that in mind if you're homeschooling your children. You don't need to get it right. You don't need to get it perfect. You just need to get it going. Get it going first. And then you start making it better. In fact, in the homeschool sisterhood, we have different stages of homeschooling that we teach and we focus on. And the first one is make it happen. Make it happen. I mean, if you're going to homeschool, you got to start someplace. You need to make it happen with the basics, with the foundations. Then the second one is make it awesome, right? Now that you have mastered the basics, now that you master the foundation, you know, the language arts and the math, and now you can start adding things like poetry tea time, and let's learn about artists and composers, let's do nature studies, let's, so you just add it and you make it awesome, you make it more exciting for the kids, right, and then we make it memorable, that's our third stage, we make it memorable, how do we, how do we make memories while we're teaching our kids different things. How, how can this be stuck in their heads in a good way that they're going to look back and say, oh, that was awesome. I really love doing that. That's when my mom growing up, when we were homeschooling or whatever, when, when we were doing anything in life. And then the fourth one is make it, uh, make it a legacy, right? Make it something that you leave behind, that change lives, impact lives too after you're you're gone and that your kids want to duplicate it and they want to, they want to do even better than you did. So keep those things in mind that progress comes from little steps, right? We don't start homeschooling and leaving a legacy on the first day or first year or even in the first 10 years, let me tell you, right? It's little by little. We make it happen. We make it awesome. We make it memorable. And we start adding things that makes a big change, a big progress in your homeschool. So since we're talking about making it happen, I'm going to bring a little bit of reality check to everyone here that when we start making anything new to us, we make a heck of a lot of mistakes, don't we? We are masters of making mistakes when we're making something new. Either it's like learning to bake bread for the first time or, you know, what did I did the other day? I forgot to put salt in my bread and oil. And oh my goodness, my dough was just like sticking and everywhere. It was just a disaster. I'm like, I've been making bread for years and yet I forgot to put oil and salt that day because I had too much going on in my head. Uh, but I do make the meanest bread ever. Everyone that comes to my house loves my bread. But listen, I just didn't start at making it perfect right away, right? So we make all kinds of mistakes when we're starting to do something uh, for the first time. So today I want to touch a little bit about the mistakes that we make when we're starting to homeschool. And, and I listen, you guys, don't think like because you've been doing that for a long time that you're not going to make the same mistakes. And don't think that because you're not homeschooling right now that you're not going to get any lessons from it. Because I'm pretty sure you're going to leave here today like very uh, inspired and encouraged and with new ideas and goals in your head. So and I, I tell you this because as I shared my story before, I homeschooled blindly <laughs> for three years before I found out I could do something better. I just did what I knew, which was what I learned in public school. I try to, to, you know, redo it at home. And, and that is, it's a big mistake. We're going to talk about that too. So as a mom, first and foremost, my number one advice to you, and that's a mistake that we all make from time to time, is that put yourself first. You must put yourself first. You need to put your oxygen mask first. You know, like when you sit on the airplane and they're telling you if something goes wrong, here's what you do. You put your mask on first, then you take care of your children. Then you make sure that your kids put their mask on. But first, you. Why? Why you are so important? Why? 
I don't know about you, but I believe that we moms, wives, we are the strongest pillar in the home. We're the glue that keeps it all together, right? We're the glue that keeps it all together. We're the, we're the managers. We're coordinating things. We're supervising things. We're making sure that everything is working somehow. And if you're not, then you're living in chaos right now. <laughs> but we need to be in a good position in order to help other people. Have you ever thought like, what would happen to my family if something happens to me? Will they ever have underwear and socks clean again in their lives? Will they ever eat, you know, a healthy meal instead of two minutes noodles? Have you ever thought about that? Because I have many times, many times. So our job is actually to do right and teach our kids to do right, right? But we need to be doing because you need to be the role model. You need to be the example. You need to be the one that is mentoring your children to do things. So you, you need to take care of yourself first before you take care of everybody else. You need to make sure that you're breathing, walking, leaving <laughs> in order to take care of your family. And that was a hard lesson on me when I burned out completely five, six years ago. I think it's six years already. Yeah, six years ago. So I'll tell you a little bit about my story. I'm not going to get too much into it. I know I'm going to be talking about some of this stuff with Julie Ross and her podcast this week. But um, here's what happened to me. I was pastoring two churches as the assistant pastor in one of the churches as the interim pastor. My husband is a worship pastor and I being a woman's pastor, we're both being youth pastors, young adults pastor, small group pastors, you name pastor, you know. Um, my kids used to call me pastor mom. This is not a joke. They used to call me pastor mom uh, because everybody called me pastor and my husband pastor, so it's like pastor mom and pastor, you know, dad. So I'll be on Julie Ross podcast. I don't know exactly what they were recording on, on Friday. Anyway, so, uh, who was asking me? I think it was like Rachel. Oh, um, oh, was Don. Don was asking me. So I was, well, we were working in two churches. I had three little kids. Imagine that six years ago, my kids were six, four, and two. Uh, we were homeschooling. Somehow we were homeschooling already. We were taking turns, my husband and I, you know, juggling the kids, make sure that we were homeschooling them. And we were pastoring two churches. And besides pastoring two churches, my husband was a church janitor. My husband worked at Old Navy on his spare time, if that was ever possible. But he worked on Old Navy in the evenings and on the weekends. Some of the Saturdays that we did not work at the church, he was working at Old Navy so we could make and meet and make sure that we're surviving as a family. Um, we were new immigrants still in Canada. I mean, I, I would still feel like new immigrants 10 years later, but we lived in three different countries in two years. There's, there's a lot of hardship when you're restarting your life again and you got nothing, you got no savings, you got nothing, you got, you know. So anyways, it was a really difficult time for us. My stress level was from one to 10, a thousand maybe. I cried myself to sleep for two and a half years because I felt like the worst mom in the whole world. I felt like I took care of 600 people at the church, but I couldn't take care well of three little kids at home, right? Because all my, my time and my attention, my focus were on the other things. And I start neglecting myself and neglecting myself and neglecting myself, you know, to the point where I got so sick, I ended up in hospital five times. And the last time I was hospitalized, my husband had to call 911 for me because I was paralyzed from head to toe for three and a half hours. I couldn't talk. I couldn't move anything in my body. I had no control over my body. That means I peed myself a few times. I had no control. My whole body was paralyzed for three and a half hours. So I burned out in such a stage that I haven't found another mom who had gone through the same thing that I have gone. I was taken to critical care, spent the night in critical care, being tested in every possible single way, only to find out the very next morning at 5.30 in the morning when my doctor walked into, into my room and said to me, you had a panic attack. 
Now, I have never, my doctor said that to me, I have never seen any panic attacks like it. I have never seen a person being completely paralyzed for three and a half hours. Like I couldn't lift my head, my, my neck, if I wanted to. I couldn't talk. I, I couldn't. I had no control over my body. So my burnout was so severe, so severe that, um, of course, I had to step down from full-time ministry. I had to stay home for the first time in my life. And I had to recover physically, emotionally, um, spiritually. Let me tell you, we are made, God created this body, soul, and spirit, right? And this is us as a whole person. And if we do neglect one of these, the others will feel it. There's no question about it. I was physically, I couldn't stand up and hold a glass of water in my hand. I could not get up and feed my kids, cook for my kids. I depended on people from my church to come and wash my dishes and, you know, cook for my kids and then wait for my husband to come home in the evening and help taking care of me. That was the state that I was for months. It took me almost a year to be a function person again. And the process of my burned out in the process of feeling so useless physically, emotionally, I was done. And spiritually, I became, I became very depressed. And I start questioning if God had removed his anointing from me. If God had, if I had done something wrong, that God was removing his calling from my life. And I start isolating myself. The more you feel depressed, the more you want to isolate yourself because you don't want to talk to people. And guess what? Every time I try to pray or read my Bible, I, I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I thank God every day for, for the ministry focus on the family because their clergy care is amazing. And I was able to have counseling over the phone for free as a pastor through focus on the family. And little by little, I start recovering. But I went downhill so horribly and all started with me neglecting myself. All started with me neglecting myself. So mama's first lesson that you should always learn, if you have never thought about that before, please, I beg you, think about that right now. Put your oxygen mask first. Take care of yourself well. If you're in good health, you can take care of your family. You can work hard. You can plant your food. You can harvest your food. You can clean the house. You can. But if you are sick, if you have no strength, if you're mentally not in a good position, right? You won't be able to care for anybody else. And your children depend on you. Your children depend on you right? So thank God he took me out of that pit of darkness that I got in. He restored me in a powerful way. And because of that, I launched my blog because I felt God was telling me I should help moms not to burn out the way that I did. And that's what I've been doing for the past five years of my life. It's encouraging moms, helping moms, so they can never be in the position that I put myself in six years ago. So put your oxygen mask first. You need to make sure you're taking care of yourself physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Don't neglect any of it. Don't neglect any of it, okay? Treat yourself as a whole person, not just compartments. I'm gonna take care of the physical, and not take care of the emotional or not take care of the spiritually. All three are very important. And I believe God wants us to be good stewards because that's the temple of the Holy Spirit. We're created in his images. It's a big responsibility for us to take care of the body that God has given to us and make sure that we're feeding our minds with good things. Make sure that emotionally we're healthy and that spiritually we're healthy. And one of the ways that you do this is by finding your tribe, finding your sisterhood, find the people 
that you can surround yourself with, that it's always encouraging you to be a better person. So for me, think about when, if, if you ever dealt with depression, right? Because the enemy loves, loves to isolate yourself. And the more you isolate yourself, the more depressed you get because your thoughts are consuming, right? Your negative thoughts are just consuming your mind. And, and it, just, it just pushes you like to the darkest pitch, like the deepest, darkest pitch. So if you have a group of people around you that it's helping you to keep your eyes on Jesus, help you to make progress in your life. It's encouraging and uplifting. They will see the signs that they were not going to let you down. Make sure that you're surrounded by a tribe of like-minded people that can help you to keep your arms up when you have no strength to keep it up. That's why it's so important what we do. That's why we have the wise families, uh, wise families prepare group. That's why we have the homeschool sisterhood. That's why we have the common blessed community, because we want to make sure that you have the community that you need, the support and the encouragement that you need for all things, not just for your homeschool, but for all things. We work together. We are better together, right? We're, we're so much better together. We can encourage one another. We can share encouraging stories with one another. Tony is saying, I've been trying to come out of severe burnout, but it's so hard. Suggestions, yes, we can have a talk. Me and you, we're going to talk about how to get out of that burnout. I'm going to tell you, because I know it's not easy. With eight kids, Don, it, it's, if it's hard with three, and it's sometimes it's hard with one, imagine with three. So that's, it is very, um, very hard, but it's not impossible. I survived, and I helped moms to survive, so I'll talk to you about it. Yes, um, Eva is saying, Anna's bringing a good point. We need to first care for our hearts and minds before we move on. Accountability is essential. Our children and husbands need us. We can't give out of empty buckets. That's so true. You guys, and think about it. If you're not filling yourself up with good things, your attitude will suck. Your witness will be gone. You're going to be in a mad mood and people will know that you're just walking in PMS attitude, right? Because you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. You're laughing because you know what I'm talking about. Let me tell you, right? So we need to make sure we're caring for ourselves. So we're not just slapping people all over the place when we walk around and just, you know, snapping uh, at everything that everybody says. We need to make sure we are taking good care of ourselves. Listen, what comes in goes out, right? If you're just letting toxic thoughts and toxic relationships and things affect you so badly like that, hurt people, hurt people. You're not going to get anything good coming out. So make sure that you're bringing in good things. That's why sometimes I just turn off the news. I turn off everything that is happening. I don't go to social media because I know that all those things are going to affect me. I go to the word of God and then my attitude changes. My hope comes back. My faith comes back. My eyes are on Jesus. You just realign your mind to the mind of Christ, right? That's what we need to do. Susan is saying, I don't have local support. So the wise families, they call me blessed and the sisterhood communities are such a blessing to me. Yay! Um, Susan, I homeschooled the first three years with no one that homeschooled around to help me. And I didn't know anything about online homeschool groups because that back then was like, they still had some forums and stuff, but none. So I was very determined to create a good community and a very clean community, christ Center community. And we did that in our Facebook group. We, we went up to almost 5,000 uh, Christian homeschool moms there. We never had issues on that group because it's so encouraging and uplifting. And now we're trying to move that group into Mind and Networks and continue this here. But it's such a blessing. We need to be around people that are like-minded, that have the same vision, the same perspective, the same goals that we have. So we can always helping each other to make progress yeah um i have the nutritional physical experience to share with you all i'm getting 
much emotional support here. Yes, Veggie, I know. So good. Thank you for helping us. Yeah, you guys. So yeah, that burnout actually taught me a lot of things. I end up studying to be a certified health coach, take good care of my body and everything else and just helping other people. Let me tell you, you need, we, we go through certain things in life because God has a purpose for it. I have no doubts about it. Your test today will become your testimony tomorrow. There's a reason why you're going through even when you don't know or even why you're just kicking your legs and crying and saying, why me, God? What did I deserve it? Why couldn't you pick somebody else, right? Just like, have you guys ever watched Fiddler on the Roof? Yeah, Fiddler on the Roof is one of my favorite movies, right? Especially I come from a Jewish family, so everybody's super dramatic. And there's a part where uh, Ravi Tevye, he says, he says, why couldn't you have picked somebody else? Why couldn't you have chosen somebody else? Why do we have to be the chosen ones, you know? Sometimes we feel like that. Why? Why you chose me? And this is a sad thing, but when I was a missionary in Israel, um, I mean, we went through a lot in the mission field, not just in Israel, but, you know, doing missions all over the place and in Africa and South America and all over the place. And I often, I, I, you know, in my rebellious mode, so we always have like, it's almost like somebody pushed a rebellious mode on you and you're just like, Rah! stop freaking out and saying things that you shouldn't say. In my rebellious mode, I used to just cry out to the Lord and say like, why couldn't you have made me a cashier at the supermarket? You know, my life would be so much easier. I'll have a steady income and I'll have benefits. And But no, I was a missionary living by faith. If somebody sent us offering, we had food. If somebody didn't send us offering, we had nothing to eat. And it was hard. It was really hard. But now I regret so much because I cry every day and I pray. It's like, God, send us back to the mission field. You know, we don't want to have a normal life anymore. We want to live a life full of excitement and faith. And because it is, you guys, when you depend on God alone to live, it's, Oh, it's amazing how he provides and how he does everything. But anyways, so the third thing that I want to talk about today, you know, we talked about putting your oxygen mask first. We talked about finding your tribe, uh, finding the community to support you and to encourage you and be your cheerleaders and your advisors. Um, the third thing that I want to talk about, and, and maybe Dawn, that's going to help you too. It's keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep your life simple. Keep your keep your your schedule. Your schedule doesn't have to be full. On the contrary, do less. And I talk about that all the time. Do less, but do better. Keep everything simple. Keep your home simple. Keep your listen. I I love sharing this because I think it was such a life changing experience for us. Going from a big home into an RV overnight with three kids and getting rid of 90% of what we had, it was life-changing. You know, to this day, we do laundry once a week because we still have the same amount of, of clothes that we had in the RV. I don't have to be cleaning and picking up stuff all the time because we don't have stuff to be around. I don't have a ton of laundry to do because we don't have that many clothes to wash. Everything that we have is just the essential. It's just what we need. So keep that, even in your kitchen. Like, honestly, if you have 20 cups, guess what? Your kids are going to dirt all, they're going to dirt all the 20 cups. You know, it's true, right? If you have like 30 plates, they're going to dirt all the 30 plates and the 50 bowls and the 20 cups and but if you only have in my house we have five people if you only have five plates five cups five bowls you, you don't ever even need to use a dishwasher and if you tell each one once you use you wash it problem solved it's always clean right so keeping things simple help us so much do you have extra for hospitality done that's called paper plates it is called paper plates and it's a blessing you use it you throw it in the trash can and it's all done 
thank you for coming. We love your company. Come back soon. You know, that's what we always did. Here in the house, yes, we do have some extra here in the house because it was in the house when we rented, but we don't use it all the time. We really don't. I keep it simple. I like my paper plates for once in a while. You know, you guys, sometimes, it even makes me think like, bring your own plate when you come. <laughs> if you're in a campground, you can totally do that. Just bring your cups, you know, just bring your plates. We, we've done this in a campground before and in, in, uh, was that in, in Key West last year, which was really fun. We did a progressive lunch and we had to go to each other campers to eat lunch and each one had a different dish. So you could go to each other's camper and, and eat there, but everybody brought their own bowl and their forks and their, you know, it was so fun and it worked. So listen, we are, we naturally, we overcomplicate things. We naturally think we need more than we actually do. We naturally think our kids need so much more than they actually do. Let me tell you that once we got rid of all the toys that my kids had in the house and moved to the RV with just the Legos and a few, a, a little box of toys for the girls, they still kept playing the same way. They actually became more creative and more resourceful with less things that they had. It feels like, especially today, the kids, the more they have, the more bored they get, right? They got so many games. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to play. They got so many Barbies, you know, all the Barbies with the hairs cut and naked and, you know, like, oh, I need a new Barbie. No, you don't. You need to save the one that you have and use the one that you have. It's true. I think our kids are actually, they are, um, they have so much that is actually not helping them to learn to be content with what they have. It's actually making them entitled. And in a certain way, we're the same. You know, we feel like just because we have a big house that we need to fill every wall with decoration or every room with furniture and every nook and crane with little things. And then we are like, oh, I need to clean all day. I have to be dusting everything all day because the more you have, the more you're gonna have to clean, right? But yeah, Jenna saying, I get, um, I get so frustrated with what they have. It's not enough, but it's really too much. It is. You know, I actually learned this from another blogger. She said she, she decided she was going to um, remove all the toys from her kid's bedroom. All the toys. She packed everything in totes. And then she told her kids to pick the two favorite things to play with. So the kids got those two, two favorite things out, each one, and kept it in their bedroom. Everything else was put away. Months later, the kids did not even remember the things that they had. So what she did is after a few months, she will let them shop for toys. So she said, okay, you've been using those two toys, playing with those two toys. It's time for you to go and pick something else. So she will bring the totes back and said, now you can pick two more things and put those other two things away. And the kids were so excited. Oh my gosh, my teddy bear that I haven't seen forever. And they took it out and they were playing with those things for months. They don't need everything else. And moms, guess what? Now homeschool, it's exactly the same. Do you know how many books I have in my shed there by the RV that I haven't needed all those months here in the house? A full shelf. Well, three shelves. <laughs> we are the same. When we go to Florida for the winter, or when we used to, when we could travel, when life, you know, like when we had the liberty, the freedom to get on a plane and go anywhere we wanted, I used to get one uh, carry-on luggage and on that carry-on luggage I used to put the kids book for school because we normally would take with us on a plane it's a long day for us flying to Florida normally we fly to we go from here to Seattle Seattle to Las Vegas Las Vegas to Fort Lauderdale anyways and then during the whole two three months we were there that's all they use for their homeschool every single day all they use every single day so same thing Keep it simple. Less is better. You don't need 
all of that. Sometimes it's better for us just to clean up all the clutter. Take, just get rid of it. Just keep what you use every single day. And the more you do that, even with your all the knickknacks in your kitchen, you will see. Like I have things that I keep in my kitchen, that are my outside kitchen in the RV. Right now they're here. But like my juicer, my well, my bread machine I use every two days. That's that's a non-negotiable. My bread machine, my uh, my instant pot, right? My Dutch oven, those three things like I'm always using every day. But my juicer, my, what's the name of that thing? Um, the food processor. I normally, I use the, I'll tell you when I use the food processor. I use the, my food processors, my food processor for potatoes to make latkes on Hanukkah once a year. <laughs> and it's, it's true. That's what I use because I want all the potatoes to be shredded and and anyways, I can make, I can make latkes, but there's a lot of things that we keep around us all the time that it's just more work for us to clean and to, you know, keep it tidy. So keep it very simple. Keep your homeschool schedule. Very simple. Very simple here in our house. My goodness. We like, my kids are done with school so early. Um, we, we do our reading, we sit down. I have my little rocking chair there by the window. I don't know if you guys can see it. I love sitting there now. And cause I just, I just rearranged the furniture last week. I sit there and I read to my children. So we do our devotional. We do our Bible reading. We read a missionary story. Right now we're reading again missionary stories with the Millers that I love. I've been reading that book for so many years. We always look back and start reading the stories again. Um, we read from our nature book, our nature reader. And then the kids do their individual Bible study. They do their language arts. They do their math. Okay. Then they take a break. I do my videos around one o'clock my time. So they eat something. I do my videos. By the time that I finish here, we get back together in the living room. We're going to do either history or we're going to do science. And then we're basically done, right? And then we do once a week, uh, twice a week. Once a week, we have book clubs with the sisterhood. And then the other day on Fridays, we have the Friday feast, which they learn about a lot of things, habit training, composers, uh, painters, famous painters. Um, they have show and tell. They learn about famous poet. This month we're learning about Shakespeare, which is so exciting for the kids because my kids love Shakespeare. But we keep it very, very simple. I want to make sure that I have plenty of time to take care of their studies, my home, and my work, right? My community, you people, because I love you people. I feel recharged when I'm spending time with you, right? So um, even though it's so funny, you guys, um, people think that I'm an extrovert. I'm an introvert. I need quiet actually to recharge myself. So I can come here and do this video and then like I crash and I don't want to see anybody the rest of the day. <laughs> but my heart is full because I know that this is where I get my encouragement. So we keep it things very simple. And, and because we keep things very simple, there's always time to do extra stuff that we love to do. There's always extra time to, you know, play games or go for nature walks or so keep your schedule your schedule simple keep your homeschool simple keep your house simple your your home simple have little systems that work on its own i i have a master class called how to run your home and homeschool on autopilot so if you guys have never done it it's free i can share the link with you guys but it's completely free and i give you actually all my templates and my checklists and the whole yada yada for you to follow, but it's it's very simple. Um, so I want to I want to talk about some of the don'ts. So some of the don'ts. So we talked about the do's. You know, take care of yourself first. Make sure you have good encouragement and community around you, support. Make sure that you're simplifying your life and not complicating your life. Um, now some don'ts in your homeschool. Don't add more curriculum. Don't add more than you can, you can do with your kids. 
right? Yeah, Donna's saying good a reminder. I should do that that one again. Um, are you guys talking about Super Bowl? <laughs> oh, it's so funny to look back at, at your conversations here. Michelle is in Tampa. All right, Donna's in Columbus, Ohio. There we go. I'm in British Columbia, Canada, you guys. Yeah, so don't add more. Don't add more. I like to do some rotations in our homeschool. So we like to have some extra time to do unit studies, for example. I love doing unit studies with my kids. Once in a while, it's good because, you know, you break from the same curriculum that you're doing every day and it kind of just brings something new, some interesting topics that you're, you know, you've been talking about and you want to just learn more about it. So we kind of like, we have time enough to bring these unit studies. But when I do this, I set aside other things. I don't just add to the top of the pile, right? So because I already plan time for some unit studies on a regular basis for us, I take turns using different unit studies. Right now, we are starting a Pioneers unit study in the homeschool sisterhood, which by the way, I got a 50% off coupon for us. So I'm so excited. So I've been wanting to do this Pioneer study. I'll show you, let me see. Did I take it off from here? Yeah, I did, hold on. Okay, I got mine printed and ready to go. So this is a four week study on Pioneers and it's good for kindergarten all the way to high school. So it has like different levels. So you do, there's videos, there's reading, but it's something that um, probably is going to take us, I don't know, let me see, an hour a day to do it. And yeah, I think it's about not even an hour a day, not at all, but you do it five days a week for four weeks, this specific study, right? So we kind of rotate. So for one month, we do a unit studies. And then the other month, we don't do any unit studies. And then we wait another month and then we add another fun unit studies. So it could be anything. It could be on indigenous people. It could be on, and it, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, on the same history period of time that you're actually learning. Because some people think like, oh, but that's not what you're learning. But it's okay because you're gonna learn anyway. So. It doesn't matter. Right now we're doing renaissance in our history, but hey, we decided to go down to pioneers again and study American history and American stuff. But we're learning a bunch of things because we're learning about being self-sustainable. We're learning about a lot of things that I want my kids to learn because of the days that we're leaving. So I think it's very interesting for us to do this now. So anyways, don't add more curriculum. If you want to do something, then pause something else. Otherwise, it's just gonna become more and more for you and your kids. So keep it simple, keep it last, but make sure that you're adding some fun stuff to it as well. Don't make it all boring. Don't make it all about the three R's all the time. You know, there's, you know, there's something fun that you can add it to it. Um, and I say this because otherwise there's two consequences of, actually there's three consequences of adding more curriculum and adding more stuff into your plate or committing to do more than you actually, you're going to be able to. One, you're going to overwork your kids. Two, you're going to overwhelm yourself. Right and three, you're gonna over, you're simply gonna over schedule, and and it's gonna become it's gonna you can handle for a time, but after a while you're like, I can't keep doing this. This is too much for me because you your kids are overworked and you are overwhelmed, right? So make sure that you're keeping those things in mind, and you don't have to be a new homeschool mom to actually learn a lesson from this because I think that those lessons can be used at any point and stage of. Uh, time. Michelle is saying we don't usually do unit studies, but if we add something, we try to add it during lunch bunch. So we don't have to add. We do lunch bunch versus morning time. Oh, cool. I've never learned of, yeah, 
I never heard the term lunch bunch yet. It's morning time. So I guess it is. I guess it's, it's just like what we do morning time, but like during lunch, which is fine. That is a great idea. So you're still, you know, you're sitting down, you're having a meal and you're, you're still learning something different. I, yeah. So that's a good idea too. But, you know, you don't have to make your day longer in order to do something that you really want to do. So make sure that you're not adding more, that you're not overwhelming yourself, that you're not overworking your kids, that you're not over scheduling yourself. And, and I want to like finish here today just talking about the importance of creating margins and making room to breathe in your life. Uh, we talked a little bit about the importance of not neglecting yourself, but we never actually talked about how to take good care of yourself, right? And I think a lot of moms end up burning out because one, they're neglecting themselves. Two, they're overscheduled. There's too much on their plate and they don't know how to say no. And I know that was my problem. Dawn, I don't know if that was your problem, but my problem was that I felt like I was a superwoman that I had to rescue everybody else and I could never say no to anything. I actually, when I first became a believer, let me just close this because otherwise it's going to be dinging and doingy. All those notifications coming in from different groups. Um, I felt as a new Christian, I'm talking about 20, 22 years ago, that saying no to somebody was rude and unkind and unchristian. So I felt bad about when somebody asked me, like, can you do this for me? I was like, oh, yeah, sure. And I started taking on too much. And I created this culture in me of taking on too much and never knowing how to say no, never putting clear boundaries. You know, I felt bad about saying no to things. And, and that got me to the point where it got later on, you know, 15, 16 years later on. So make sure that you are not overscheduling yourself, that you have plenty of margins to rest. Sleeping enough is important. Quiet time is important. Mother culture time is important. We kind of talked about that um, last week in our book club in the sisterhood. That's what we talked about last Tuesday. Um, by the way, if you're not part of the homeschool sisterhood, you guys, it is such a blessing. I think the sisterhood takes so much off our plate um, in terms of what our kids learn and, you know, and how they're growing and the book clubs and all of the stuff that they are involved. But my goodness, it's, it's, it's such a blessing. And then we got to have the book clubs and, and discuss all those things. But you need, you need to make sure that your agenda is not all full all the time. Let me, I think I showed you guys before my ideal week schedule. And I have a template um, that you guys can download on the blog and you can create your ideal week schedule. And, and the idea here is that, is that create your schedule in a way where you can get the things that you need to get done and you're telling your time where to go. Just like when you make a budget and you take, tell your budget where to go. I don't know about you guys, but we do budgets here. And we use an app called Every Dollar where we need to budget everything until it's like zero on the top. So we need to know exactly where every pennies and every you know, dime and nickel is going to because we have to keep our eyes on the goal of being completely debt free. And while we don't have any more consumer debt or anything like that, we still have an RV to pay and that's our goal to finish paying our RV this year. So we very carefully we designate where the money is going to go. Same thing with our time. Listen, today is all we have. We, we are not promised tomorrow. So we need to make sure that today we're using our time wisely and we're getting our priorities done. Not just the urgent, not just everything else that we want to do, but the priorities. So the, the ideal week schedule helps you to put all your priorities into place. 
Have you guys ever seen that video or explanation of like putting your um, your rocks in a jar and that you need to fit all the big rocks first and then the little the little rocks will fall into the right place. But if you try to put all the small rocks first, when you try to put the big rocks in the jar, they won't fit. So creating your idea week schedule is the same way. It's making sure that you're putting all your big rocks, your absolute priority into place, and then you can bring the little things and feature into your day. So this is my idea week schedule. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that it's going to be exactly like this. And I have to actually, this is not the, this is the old one. This is 2019, 2020. So it doesn't have a few things that I'm doing right now. But the idea is that if I use this as a reference to how I spend my time and how long I spend in each thing, that I have enough time to rest during my day. So if you see here after 5, 5.30 in the afternoon, I got nothing booked. Nothing ever, ever, ever booked. So I know that every single evening I have time with my family, except for Friday nights that we have small groups. But right now we're not having small groups on Friday nights. So I know that I have margin to breathe. I have time to read books. I have time to watch movies. I have time to watch Pride and Prejudice with my girls, which I love. And When Calls the Heart and all the girly stuff and Hallmark movies with my girls. And I have time to just rest. Same thing with Shabbat, with Saturdays. Same thing with Sundays. My only obligation and commitment on Sundays is to go to church. Right now, we don't even go to church. And yes, Susan, Calling Firth version is the best one. We just watched all six episodes this week, me and my girls. She's talking about Pride and Prejudice, you guys. It's my favorite. So yeah, and, and that way, I know, you know, my, before you guys, if you, if you see my schedule before, when I was still working in two churches and homeschooling the three kids, I was gone from eight in the morning to 11 o'clock at night most days. That was my life. I came home, I ate a meal, I left again because we had small groups, youth meeting, uh, worship practice, Bible study, you know, you name it, like pastors have no life. So it was, it was exhausting. It was so exhausting. Sometimes I get home like at 11 o'clock at night and I would just cry because I had to still do laundry. And that means I had to stay up still for another two hours, washing everything, drying everything, folding everything, putting everything away. It was so exhausting, so exhausting. So make sure you got that white margin in everything that you do. So Betty, let me just read your comment here. Oh, we're self-employed, packed five big boys in a two-bedroom house with gobs and of tools and homeschool books. I'm better at pacing myself, but not setting goals. My stress comes in how others are with me. Hmm. So what do you mean by how others are with you? You can unmute yourself and talk. Hi. Hi. <laughs> This is cool all across the country, isn't it? Isn't it cool? We all get together and we chat. I know. I know. I'm probably old enough to be your mother. But my kids are from age uh, 31 down to 14. I don't know. I'm 45, 47. Oh, 45, 47. So, yeah. I don't know. I think you were too young to have me. I'm, I'm 57 now. but No, um, you couldn't be my mother. <laughs> I know, I I'm almost your age. <laughs> Not Anyway, I'm doing, um, I have too much stuff in my kitchen for sure, because I'm doing farmhouse type cooking in a little one. Oh, yeah. But yeah, the whole basement is full of tools. And when we went through the house, my, my belongings were going and the books were all being put on the shelves. So he kept grade school books and I'm still weeding them out a little bit, a little bit oh, at a time. Yeah. Yeah, That's crazy. And uh, my garden is uh, like 10 foot on one side, 15 on the other. It's my whole yard is garden. So, so amazing. But, That's such a blessing. Uh, I'm creative in the garden. I'm creative in the cooking. And 
I like to interact in the communities and share that now. Because that's what I love that I do. But um boy, setting goals. I don't ha- I don't have control over their school. I don't have um because uh, somebody else is um, deciding what we do and how we do it. And uh, how old are the boys now? The last two are 14 and 16. 18 year old just up and went to work. <laughs> and okay. and well, I got I have a 23 year old still living at home who's now working full time at church. And he's got right. two other. The, my boys work hard, and they, they've they actually been asked to be in the jobs they're in. That's good. Praise God. That's good. I mean, there's good things about it, but I think what's happening is the spiritual things going on now, you know, is, is the lid's coming off the evil. It's going to be bubbling up like bad sewage in the families, too. Yeah, we know that. All the things that were swept under the rug, so that's that's what I'm feeling now that's right and as moms and that's why it's important that we all like we're reading this book called mama bear apologetics we can't let our guard down we just can't because evil is loose in this world like never before we're seeing a decline in morality and and evil in this world like we have never seen before and as moms that's why i say we have to be the strongest pillow in the home and make sure that not all everything is running smoothly here but spiritually and actually i'm I'm speaking about that in a conference coming up now an online conference spiritually the i mean you need to make sure as a mom that your kids are safe right they're safe and they're saved both in this world because things are declining in such a speed and you need to make sure that your kids have godly character that they are saved and they are safe from all this craziness going around it is it is a big task to undertake let me tell you it's not for the faint of the faint of heart um but god has called us for this right he called us to be here for such a time as this and you know what's another thing that that that's encouraging is he's actually called them for such a time as this he did he did I mean, I have one that I named after the two spies who didn't cave in. And um, I didn't realize how strong-willed he would be growing up. (laughs) um, Is that a Joshua or Caleb? Both. (laughs) (laughs) He's got both names. That's good. That's good. He's got both, but they're faithful ones. and, And... uh it's pretty cool what god's using him for he's he's got his roots anchored and and he's he's sharing that with others that's so good that's great you know my kids are are good that way i just always feel i always used to pray that they would see other godly marriages to know what to do you know because this isn't here yeah so yeah. very good very good but, yeah. you know so there's there's good things and our every i guess every family's got their thorn that keeps them dependent on god to survive yeah yeah and that's why one of our goals should always be focused on raising you know kids with godly character with eternal right. perspective in their minds who have a strong faith foundation. That's very, very important. So you guys, I hope that today this has given you guys a little bit of, of encouragement and a new a fresh perspective on what really matters and make sure that you are not neglecting yourself. You are important as a mom, as a wife, you need to be that strong pillar. You need to be, you need to be taking care of yourselves. You need to make sure that you're resting, that you're, uh, you're not overworked, overwhelmed and, and, uh, burning out, right? You have a whole family that depends on you and, and 
make sure that you do have goals, right? You, you got to write some goals. Sometimes our goals is like plant, you know, I don't know, talk about your garden, whatever it is, or make sure that your kids are doing certain things or um, you do have goals, you know, like you want to make sure you can, let's say 50 cans of pinto beans, you know, um, but we, we, we do need to have goals. You need, you need to have clarity on the things that are really important for us to get done. Otherwise, we are going to get distracted and end up using our timing. Other things that are not so important. Eva, if I can share in the group how I do vision boards, I would love to do it. I am obsessed with vision boards. I always have all my vision boards here. Actually, my 2021, my zero fell off now. So I'm kind of upset that the, it fell off. I'm like, what are you trying to do, Lord? Is that February 21 that you want to speak to me about? But anyways, I always have my vision boards here with me. Um, I think vision boards are an amazing way to keep track of your goals, the things that are important to you. We could totally do a whole workshop on a vision board if you guys want. We'll pick a day. And we can do a whole workshop on goal setting and vision boards because I think it's it's really cool. Um, creating a vision board for your homeschool. I love creating vision boards for our, from our homeschool. So we can totally do that. So any questions about what we talked about? Anything that you guys want to share? Valentina says she will love that too. Okay, we, we can totally schedule something like that. That would be really fun. I love talking about goals and vision and things like that. I'm going to pray for you guys. Sasha, you've been quiet today. Sherry's good to have you. <laughs> Thank you. I have a quick question if you have time. If not, I can yeah. hold off. My question is, is how you ever get paralyzed with so many good choices of books and options that it's almost overwhelming to like to choose and it's almost paralyzing i'm just wondering if you've ever dealt with something like that oh yes <laughs> yes okay if there's something i have a problem buying more than i need is books and i have to be so careful i have a formula on how to choose the right curriculum for your family and that will help you uh, be clear about what's really going to work for your family and what's not going to work for your family. So I can post that in the group for you and I'll tag you because I know this is going to help you a lot. And I have spoken about that many times. Um, I, have, I have a homeschool boot camp video on that subject. So I think that that's going to be really helpful to you. I'm going to, I'm going to post it in the group for you. That'd be perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I have it. And I have, I have, um, yeah, I have a lot of good material on that too. So I think that's going to be really helpful. So let me see if I did not miss anything here. Oh, Sherry asked, where do, do, do I fit exercise? My husband and I, uh, because of the COVID restrictions that is going on here. So our gym here at the subdivision where we live, you have to schedule in advance and you need to show up. So I'm actually loving this because it forces me to go to the gym when I say I'm going to go to the gym. So we go to the gym. He comes home at five minutes before three o'clock, three o'clock. We are out to go to the gym and we have from three to four thirty to be at the gym three times a week. So that's how we do it. And this week, actually, we're doing gym Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Those are the days that we book. So three days a week, I make sure that the kids actually go and play on the playground because we can see it from the gym. We let them ride their bikes and play on the playground. And then Ryan and I, we exercise. I am never there until 4.30, never, ever. Even though my, my time booked is from 3 to uh, 4.30, I'm probably there for 45 minutes. And after that, I'm like, I need to go home and make make dinner, you know, or I'm just getting tired already. But I am making sure I'm getting that done. So, yeah, that's kind of, and it's kind of like, it's being good because it's being my time with my husband. Normally, they can only have three people in the gym at the same time. And they are very spaced out from each other. But I, I got to have some conversations with him while we were exercising 
well, I'm listening to something, you know, but it's like we, we're walking together, we're talking, we're walking back home and we're talking. It's been good for our marriage too. So it's good for him because he needed, he needed the encouragement to exercise. Yeah, so basically this is it. And you guys, if I can do it, you can do it. Wait, there's there's a way. We say here in our house, where there's a will is there's a way. <laughs> I want to pray for you guys. Let me pray for you guys. Father God, I just thank you so much for our community. We thank you for all the homeschool moms that we have here, Father God, from Lord, all over the world. Thank you for how you just brought us all together by your spirit. You just uh, you just brought us together like a magnet, Lord God. And we delight so much in spending time together and learning together, sharing things with one another and being inspired by the things that each other share in the groups, Father God. And I pray, Lord God, that you will help us to focus on the things that really matter. That, Lord, that you're going to help us to take good care of ourselves so we can take good care of others. That you will help us to simplify our lives and not overcomplicate our lives. That you help us, Lord God, not to overwork our kids or overschedule our kids, but that we'll have plenty of margins to breathe and to have fun with our family and to do the things that we need to get done. And Lord God, it's important for our mental health that we have pauses in our days, that we have breaks in our days to just enjoy a quiet time or to read a good book and drink a cup of tea and not having to be rushed to do things all day long. That's exhausting, Lord God. And I, I've, I've done the exhausting way of life before and I don't, I don't want it again. And I don't, I don't want that for anybody else, Lord. I pray that you would teach us how to live our life from a, a place of rest, of trust in you, of peace and joy. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your provision, your protection in our lives. Above all, we, take, we, we, we thank you for salvation. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for us. Thank you that all of our sins are forgiven. And thank you that he's coming back for us very soon. Keep our eyes on your son. I pray that let the Holy Spirit guide us and lead us in everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Love you, ladies. Have a great afternoon. I'm going to go finish do some science or history of the kids right now. And I'll, I'll see you guys soon. And Mama Bear Apologetic starts tomorrow. So if you have not signed up yet, please sign up because it's going to be awesome. And invite your friends to sign up too. If you are part of the Homeschool Sisterhood, it's free for you. If you're not part of the Sisterhood, it's $4.99 a month for you to join our book clubs. But it's so worth the money. And it keeps you accountable and it keeps you reading and discussing and learning and growing. and yeah, it's a blessing. Love you guys. Bye. See you soon.